Hello and welcome to Euro Asia. I am Zuleika Zaman. Here are your top stories from Europe and Asia of this week. Max Clifford, celebrity publicist, has been jailed for a total of eight years for a string of indecent assaults against girls and young women. On Monday, the 71-year-old became the first person to be convicted under Operation U-Tree. Sentencing the PR man, Judge Anthony Leonard said he had groomed and degraded his victims. Mr Leonard ruled that Clifford should serve his eight sentences of between six and 24 months consecutively. He said that Clifford, whose lawyer later said an appeal was being considered, should serve at least half his total sentence in jail. The judge said some of the offences would be charged as rape if they had happened today. After hearing his sentence, Clifford turned off his phone, took off his hearing loop, turned to friends in the seats behind him and smiled before being led to the cells. In 2013, the mortality rate for under fives in the UK was 4.9 deaths per 1,000, more than double the rate of 2.4 per 1,000 in Iceland, the country with the lowest rate. Poverty and smoking in pregnancy are two of many factors cited by experts. The analysis by US experts shows the UK rate is still low by global standards. The analysis of data on 188 countries was carried out by the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation at the University of Washington, Seattle, USA. It showed that the UK had worse rates than nearly every other Western European nation for early neonatal deaths between zero and six days. Post neonatal deaths between 29 and 364 days and for childhood deaths between one and four years. The UK's rate is comparable with Serbia and Poland. Austria, Belgium, Cyprus, Greece, Ireland, Israel, the Netherlands and Switzerland all had rates between four and 4.6 deaths per 1,000 children aged under five. Head teachers believe there were intensive efforts to infiltrate and run about six Birmingham schools in line with hardline Muslim principles. The Head Teachers Union, NAHT, has been working with about 30 members in 12 Birmingham schools over claims of a plot known as Operation Trojan Horse. General Secretary Russell Hobby said he had serious concerns about events in half of these schools. Ofsted, police, Council and government investigations are continuing. A letter sent to local authorities last year claimed that several schools had been infiltrated and were being run along hardline Muslim principles. Speaking ahead of his association's annual conference in Birmingham, Mr Hobby said he had held a meeting with 100 head teachers in the city to discuss the claims. An EU-wide ban on mangoes from India has come into force, halting imports into the UK potentially until December 2015. The ban also includes aubergines, two types of squash and a type of leaf used in Indian cooking. Shipments of mangoes were suspended into Europe after consignments were found to be infested with fruit flies. The UK imports around £6.3 million worth of Indian mangoes per year out of a UK mango market worth £68 million in total. Non-European food pests were found in 207 shipments of fruit and vegetables in 2013. Indian mango exporters said they have put checks in place and have approached the authorities in Brussels to try to get their ban lifted. Public Health England was on Friday night contacting two passengers who flew to Heathrow alongside a man diagnosed with a deadly camel born virus that has killed dozens in the Middle East. America confirmed that the first reported case within its borders of the newly emerging Middle East Respiratory Syndrome had been detected in the state of Indiana, where an American had been hospitalised after returning to the US a week ago. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention said America's first case of the virus involved a U.S. citizen who worked as a healthcare worker in Saudi Arabia. The syndrome first surfaced two years ago and since then at least 400 cases of the respiratory illness have been reported. 
and more than 100 people have died. Public Health England said the man flew on British Airways Flight 262 from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia to London and transferred at Heathrow for onward travel to the US, where he was later hospitalised. Footage uncovered by researchers at the International Centre for the Study of Radicalisation shows Jihadist rebels killing a prisoner said to be loyalist of President Bashar al-Assad. The incident is thought to have happened in the last two weeks near Raqqa in northern Syria. The footage was posted on the Instagram account of a man believed to be from London. The caption accompanying the video describes the prisoner as one of Bashar al-Assad's dogs and says the killing was retribution for the deaths of four fellow rebels and the rape of a woman. The ICSR monitors the social media accounts of hundreds of foreign flighters inside Syria. The may believe the man that posted the video is part of a group of British flighters known as Rayat al Tawhid, an affiliate of the Sunni Jihadi movement ISIS, which controls large swaths of northern Syria. Shiraz Maher, a senior ICSR researcher based at King's College London, said the killing of prisoners is a war crime in international law. Although no audible English is spoken in the video itself, analysts from the ICSR believe they have identified one of the gunmen as being a British citizen. A man is seen in the video firing shots into the body of the prisoner in the seconds after the initial bullet was fired by the main shooter. Analysis of the gunman's physical build, wristwatch and balaclava led the ICSR to conclude he is the same man seen speaking English with a London accent in other videos posted by the group. A man killed his wife in self-defence when she approached him in the form of an evil spirit. Ahmed Al-Khatib, 35, claims the jinn and apparition in Muslim beliefs then commanded him to bury her body. Prosecutors say he murdered Rania al 25, at his brother's flat in Salford and then began an elaborate deception to convince her family and friends that she was still alive. The body of the Syrian-born mother of three has still not been found 10 months after her husband said he buried her between trees near to the A19 in Thirsk, North Yorkshire. A jury at Manchester Crown Court was told that al khatib was claiming a partial defence of diminished responsibility. British aid to Pakistan should be cut unless there is proof the funds help stop extremism. A report by lawmakers said Wednesday as Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif visited London. Published just hours before Sharif was to meet British counterpart David Cameron, the International Department Committee report singled out Pakistan for criticism. Pakistan is the largest recipient of bilateral British aid with Islamabad set to receive £446 million of assistance this year. Sharif's talk with Cameron are set to focus on the threat of extremism in Pakistan, where authorities are in talks with the Taliban to try to end a seven-year insurgency. Since the Taliban began the campaign of violence in 2007, more than 6,800 people have been killed in bomb and gun attacks around Pakistan, according to an AFP tally. NATO countries, including Britain, also want Pakistan to help tackle the Taliban in neighbouring Afghanistan as foreign troops prepare to leave by the end of this year. Those are the top stories of this week. Thank you for watching. Please join me again next week. Stay safe and Allah Hafiz.